Hi, this is Mia. It is Monday morning. It's long overdue that I do a video. I should focus on blogging on the weekend so that I can express myself and not stay pent up. I was I had this thick journal with a hard paperback. I'm I'm getting a phone call from somebody. I'm not, I'm not gonna answer it. And um I had this Hold on, this stressed me out. I don't even know what I was talking about. I'm so stressed out. I opened the window to let a fly out, and I think I'm letting more in. Um, this lady texted me at like 11 something last night, or Saturday night. It's the first thing I wake up to is, Hey lady, you heard from your doctor yet? There's shifts available. And I'm like, No. I haven't heard from a doctor. My boyfriend is not even doing the same job that's right up the street I don't even know what to do we was gonna buy a truck Saturday didn't work out like part of me is like oh I don't need him to buy a truck and the other part of me is like I should have a car but I'm oh go outside fly down lower lower I'm trying to get rid of this fly by not squishing it go down you feel the wind and see the light go into the light go into the light this place for caregiving is driving me crazy. It's giving you texts and messages and it's giving you texts and a um, app message at the same time. It's like you don't need to be texting us seven days a week, all hours of the day or night. Like you need to have a do not disturb time. Like. Do not disturb time. Oh. No, it's not my boyfriend. That's weird. I am like freaking out. All right, so let's let's rewind a little bit. That threw me off. That caused me trauma. I'm not even working for these people yet, and I'm overwhelmed. My other jobs gave me texts and messages, and this guy at the lost job, he was only working one day a week. And before that, they were texting him. He refused to give the phone number, but he goes, I'll give you my Facebook Messenger in case you really need to get a hold of me. Um, even if, like me, I had to go get bottles from him, he said, I'm not giving you my number. And I tried to Facebook him. I wasn't his friend. I tried to call this other guy because I was waiting outside this guy's house. Basically, I was just supposed to show up when he wasn't there. And he said he was, so I had to come back four hours later or whatever, but this guy said, this is not legal. They can't demand, that this is a hourly rate job. They can't demand that I pick up the phone all hours of the day or night. I'm not a man, I'm not the restaurant manager or the regional manager who get salaries, you know, and, and you don't get paid for that time and you're not supposed to work off the clock. So if you do a, they used to have these webinar or call in phone webinar things and <clears throat> we were supposed to get paid but sometimes we didn't or sometimes they'd give a password and you're like it's not supposed to be work or some people were at work already and they have to sit through this some people it's like you're getting ready to go to work in an hour or two and you're trying to think oh I'm supposed to be on this call with the, all these people but I need to get in the, they, they'll be like conference call in seven minutes sorry short notice I just found out myself and you're like oh my like I need to make food for my kids make my lunch get in the shower get dressed and get my uniform out of the dryer you know I don't have time to be cradling my phone around with me you know char using up the battery you know so if you ch happen to jump in the shower for three minutes you might miss the password to get that you have to tell your boss in order to get the hour payment so stupid you know it's like you gotta tell someone I feel like the New Oregon lot like you're supposed to tell somebody uh, I guess you can opt out of it they say if you don't opt out they're like not gonna schedule you which like it's like illegal to do that but they can schedule they can use any reason they want that's legal you know These additional training at that shift, blah, 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 unable to work alone. Like, they can make up anything. 
I was talking to my counselor about my past and I, it was making me feel so freed and his phone rang and he thought it was something about me that was going to help me, but it wasn't. And I was like, can we not have interruptions while I do this? I didn't want to say anything, but I, what happened was for all of this, um, doxy me therapy appointments, pretty much every one of them is a bunch of interruptions, like phone calls, um, family members, dogs. The dog is the right word, pardon. Oh, there's like a wasp or like a hornet. Oh my God. There's a hornet trying to get in here. No, don't even. No. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so mean. No, I'm sure. Hornet trying to get in here. <laughs> All right. I had to do that. I think a hornet. There's no screens on the windows and they try to come in through the open part and the crack and the wood is like rotten. So it's, they're attracted. To the wet right away. Um, the dog, I'll pardon because you don't know any better. But you got a huge family. Can you not have somebody keep the dog away from your office door for an hour, like, or for eight hours? Like, I don't know. Like, I can't. I keep hearing family members talking to my counselor. And I'm like, how much of what I just said about sexual assault and this and that about my family and my current boyfriend and his name, did they just hear, you know? We did births, and I know the when the lady was doing her charts on the couch, her husband might be on the chair over there. Home phone might ring, and it might be a patient, you know, you have to... Use discretion, you know, and make your family member your assistant if need be and do HIPAA and PHI. But in a small town, who knows, if, you know, some 15-year-old is like, oh, I know that guy, I know those people. And look at you funny when they see you in Walmart, you know. It's like freaky because you got your picture on the screen and the um, freaking... <clears throat> voice and name that hornet's still out there we came up we came back from i was gonna say vietnam this necklace i was talking about from vietnam uh, that's from thailand we came back to our house in west virginia and um i thought i wasn't recording there was a whole bunch of hornets in the house this is a really really old house the perimeter of the front room where there's a big what the lady called picture window there was hornets like huge bees all the way around buzzing <laughs> what the f and we came back home and i don't know what we did that window didn't open these two windows this old window i don't know what we did we came back home and settled down and i don't know if it was the time that we got some meds and it made me feel cold and we cranked the heat up so hot and I had that cotton cloud like it was almost like a it was cotton but it was like a lamb's wool but curlier it was really like a cotton cloud white mattress cover and I had this freaking thing like so hot in there like I was on like floating like I could see the heat in the room like you see that above a car in the summertime or something you see the heat waves in the room <laughs> i don't know if that's the same time but those hornets left like i feel like we opened the door and came in started turning lights on opening blinds and put bringing our stuff out and they must have found a hole or tried to start a nest or something and that's in correlation to think about when you have a house set and vacant and you have nobody in the house nobody in the yard it grows up and the door gets covered with ivy and you got animals burrowing in and you got nests inside like bees nests in the house you got ants if you had left any type of food or anything and then all of a sudden like you have a house next door that somebody lives in all the time or they come in on the weekends you come back on the weekends you might have spider webs in the house and stuff on the um, light light uh what are those things called the covers I don't even think of this, what they're called. You know, this thing behind me that I'm pointing at. Uh, <laughs> light lampshade. And, you, like, you have all the stuff and you're like, 
just like a normal day you go to work and you come back we had this huge spider web like thick going across my son's room I, I don't know what what the heck that came from but it's in this house somewhere whatever made that it was like it was almost like a jump rope it was like that that thick but it was it was thicker than like thread I put my my freaking sewing machine it was scary it was like covered with some dust the heater was there and they tore up like they tore, like they messed around in the attic and who knows what they put vents in the house without screen like the proper screen there's all kind of crazy stuff when they tried to so called remodel um it was a compliance remodel not like oh let's remodel these houses just because it's time and it's needed and we want to keep the structures like no they were out of compliance which happened at at least two places I lived. And there was a lot of stuff in the new place that was out of compliance that cost a lot of money and time to give everyone heartbreak and headache and money and mess and like just, you skimp on stuff. And sometimes I skimp on something and I don't realize I'm skimping or you might sell something to a customer if you sell stuff and you realize this is crap. I try to prototype my stuff. I try to use it first or if it's a brand name I trust, but still, Offering refunds, unfortunately. Um, I was talking to my counselor about coping skills. Let me let this fly out. And I, I said, he said, oh, we got to talk about your family and bring up stuff. And he left the last 15 minutes to talk about um, coping skills. I think I was recording on here, too. And I, um, I said, oh, I know we're out of time. But I wanted to tell you that I had planted a garden and that this had happened more than once where I lived in rentals and my garden had been round up, it had been mowed over, it had been destroyed, you know, kids had picked out my fresh, I had an indoor vegetable, um, tomato, like t fruit, I guess, tomato plant. And this kid reached into my window that didn't have a screen. I forgot this window doesn't stay up. Where's the fly up? And um, this kid snatched my tomatoes from me. And I don't know. I think the mom was yelling about it's just being food and they're not really stealing. But when you are on welfare and you go buy a tomato plant and some dirt, you're not trying to, you're already not getting your money's worth, you know? Go down there. You're already not getting your money's worth because you're not going to get as many tomatoes for that five bucks as you would if you would just bought five dollars of Roma tomatoes. I'm just going to wait. I had to wait for the fly to go out so before that hornet comes back. So I tell the guy that nobody touched this side of the yard. One relative was doing something with the, with the vines and the um, prickly things, and she was putting them over here somewhere. We had done a bunch of yard work we were supposed to get paid for, didn't get a dime for it. And we had, I had did over, done over 10 contractor bags full of leaves. And I freaking like, those bags were heavy. I had to drag them. I didn't want to mess up the lawn. Like I was trying to lift them and then I would stop and pick up lead or pick up sticks on the way just to give myself a break and not, I'll try not to look as weak as I was cause they're so heavy with, with winter leaves on the ground. And we put, did some pruning and some clean up dog poop and all this. And nobody's that was in the fall nobody's touched it or the late or the early winter mid, mid winter whatever and then the trees started coming down all the all these deciduous trees are all coming down and the first one the first ones i saw my plants are in a pot in pots next to my boyfriend's boat which is right out here and i was walking out there and there was dog poop and stuff on the way to his boat and I was like, oh, I have to be real careful when I walk over there, you know, because of the dog poop. And um, I was like, well, I want to clean it up. 
it's wet, there's moldy um, life vest and old things that are probably have to be thrown out and um, leaves and stuff and, and the wood, whatever's in there is damaged. So I had, I had um, not really gone over there since the yard work and I don't feel comfortable being in the yard. Like this is like two acre yard. Nobody uses the yard. The, the other three people that live here, they'll do um, yard work sometimes and uh, barbecue regularly. But it's basically the place where you park your car and go back and forth. And I, know, I was trying to think back yesterday when I was a kid. Did I like going in my yard? We also had two acres and then plus some across the street. Did I like going out in the yard? Yes. Did I feel that comfortable? No. Um, when I was really little, I did. My dad was always watching me like a hawk and it made me feel uncomfortable so when I was a little kid I just wanted to be like play like, I don't even know if it became uncomfortable I think he just started doing the yard work less as he started living out of town so he wasn't so it's like different when you're a little kid playing in the mud and playing with your toys you play with my little ponies and stuff out in the tree like it's different because you're like in the bliss you know We lived on a lake, and I wondered why the neighbors had really nice grass, which my boyfriend calls the front yard on the lake, but the backyard. Because our front entrance and our foyer and everything was in the front of the house. There was The back entrances were like patio entrance and a back door to the living room connected to that patio. That had screen storm windows and an actual door with a window and frame and everything. like a, And so we had double that in the front where the driveway was, was our presenta pre presentation front of the house. And everyone, all the other people, they had their garages right in front of their house. And you'd go down, they'd have a little door that looked like a back door. Like, it'd be like a mud room, basically, you know. So I can see that. But people didn't have grand entrances for, like, UPS and visitors to come into a foyer to lead to a formal living room and a formal dining room. Like, I don't know. That's how I think of it as a front door. We never used that to enter the house. It's only guests. We use the side garage doors to enter the house. So I'll call it the backyard. We had the neighbor's backyard to the lake be all nice grass, open area. They had their dock. They cleaned the, I assume that they cleaned their sand to get rid of seaweed because kids were scared of the seaweed. And they'd put um, nice docks and they'd put their boats there. And they have their kids and their grandkids and everyone skiing and boating. And the adults would be out on the porch watching the grandkids and doing lawn work. And my mom planted marigolds at the mailbox, or actually, it was a paper box for years. And she came outside with me to get up. It's where it is. For years and chives she sent me out to get mint to make mint she'd make mint lipped in tea with the uh, artificial sweetener and well um, I don't know what I was doing with the computer down like that um I just like rushed over here for, I, I rushed over here not just to drink my tea that distracted me from whatever I was doing um I didn't understand why they didn't go out the yard and I would watch movies on HBO and those kids would be out tanning like white people or like having a lawn party or trampoline or like I used to go out there and play croquet by myself. I was by myself. I had people that had um, pools in the city like two hours south. Like one person that like, had an out of ground pool like we went out for 4th of July I did fireworks on the dock and my my son or my dad would try to smoke out the neighbors and have barbecue for the holidays ribs I think he did chicken ribs I feel like he, he probably did steaks but not too many I wonder if he did potatoes over there too I'm pretty sure he did shish kebabs too because I like we had the I remember the metal sticks and I was like oh god there's like onions and carrots on my fr freaking Meat, I just want the meat. I don't want like mushrooms, I was fine with, but I didn't want the rest. In fact, I just remember I had produce that I had to get out of the fridge. Um, yeah, so I had 
wondered why they didn't go out in the yard. I went to other people's houses and they would go, they didn't have a lake on their own property, but the lake would be across the street on US 23 in Osco to Michigan. They'd go out there and suntan, put on oil and sit out there as long as they could handle it. I don't even know. We didn't even go to the bathroom. Like, geez, I had an excessive bladder problem. I don't know how I was able to sit out there. So I dehydrated. I definitely did not pee in the water. I might have tried to pee in the water once in my life, probably like in the past couple of years. Like I might have tried to pee in the water once. I couldn't do it. Like I don't even know if I really tried. I feel like I tried it once recently. <laughs> like I couldn't. Like I was not. I would I couldn't pee in the bed. I couldn't pee in the water. Um, after the last time I accidentally peed as a little kid, that I was talking about. Um, so I, I was thinking about why do people have such big yards and they don't use them. They don't sit on the porch and read a book. Like, if there's smoke, someone here smokes, so you smell their smoke, and you, they smoke in the house, so we have to shut the vents to the house off, the main house. But you're like, why do these people have this yard? Um, maybe they got a good deal on the property, and they say, that's it. it's none of my business. But when I have a yard, I'm like, I like the trees, and I like to garden, and I like to um, just look at the nature and try to go out and look at spots where mice and rats would nest to try to keep that clean or I'm horrible at gardening and lawn work but I like to go out there and do the plants rearrange them clean the little stuff off and sit in a chair and try to read we live right on the highway exit so it's 50 60 mile an hour car is going right literally shake your house right and it's right above you it's just right at your level it's so loud I would do as much as I could the kids in the neighborhood would cuss and swear I, sat, I had chairs on the front porch I would try to read out on the front porch um, sometimes I could only stand two minutes or less because of the fighting and the Lots of people cuss and swear, so it's not about the cuss and swearing. It's about this stuff. Energy was so negative, and it's just, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Like, like it makes me ill. Um, to talk about my family, I was going to tell the counselor that something made me feel ill, thinking about sexual assault as a child, inappropriate touching. It makes me feel like I want to get sick. Like, it's bad enough. I've been assaulted by non relatives. But when it's somebody that's inside, that the other adults welcome inside your house, your safe space, and you're inappropriately touched. You know, as a kid, they're gonna wait. They wait until there's no one else, no witnesses, you know? And just like I had got hurt in the soffit as an adult, I didn't grab my clothes, throw them on in the hallway, run outside to a paper and call 911. You know? I was taught that you don't matter, that, I, that me it doesn't matter. So I said that gardening helped me. Grandma was a gardener, and I appreciate her growing her own foods. She was one of the healthiest people in my family. Um, she ate vegetables, canned, like canned jarred green beans, and I mean, say green beans. I don't like them. They're like stringy. They're like thick, like hard green beans. I was used to those bright green green beans from the freezer that were like soft with margarine on top and salt. Like, that's what I like. And these are like string beans with a like, tough edge. My mom probably should have eaten all that. <clears throat> and I just took gifts from grandma. And should have eaten it for dinner. But, um, I saw her going. I went in the perimeter of her backyard. So every place I lived, they cut down my garden, round up my garden picked my plants. One lady was coming over eating my, I had plants, growing plants on the front yard. She was, it's time to eat this. And she stood there and talked to me. 
and she was picking at it and she was like eating it and I was like don't touch my plant she's like well it needs help it needs to be these leaves need to go I'm like don't touch my plant and I have to say you know I feel like I'm not, I am not gonna take energy let's tell this lady and that one had um what do aphids eat that one had those fuzz bugs the contaminated flower pot on my front porch that I refuse to dump and clean and start over so it continuously has those mites in it, the flower pot. Um, I don't know, <laughs> like 10 years of mites, but it's quarantine. Um, I'm stress eating right now, by the way. I need to make some more tea. So I had, um, <clears throat> I had said that nobody touched this garden since winter. And we went to Walmart to get dirt and he saw the price six fifty for the small container. Nine ninety five for the big one. I'm like, I wonder if we should get the big one. I'm like, no, I'll just get the two of the little ones. For six fifty. There's only three cubic units um different. Well, so we get to check out and they're charging like what? Twelve ninety nine or something. No, well, the sign says 60. I didn't see it. I didn't take a picture of it. And, like, the bigger one costs cheaper than this. I'm like, no. It took forever. And this lady lied and wouldn't say she was going to help us. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go back and get the big one. Most of the lanes in Walmart are self checkout. So there's. It's early in the morning. There's hardly anyone in the store. There's like one of. There's like a whole section of like five, ten self checkouts right here. A cashier there. I think one or two cashiers and there's like another whole section of self-checkout and we were the only ones over there we were standing there for a long time and a guy did come he had like three things in his hand and I was like we wrong everything up but that and besides the price a second one wouldn't ring up and so we need help with that and I go all right I'm gonna go back and get the big one because um, they were sending employees back and forth and they were ignoring us and we are standing there for 10 minutes. I go, because at first I go, I'm going to go back and look at the price and see. And I was like thinking I, I was going to run these. They were too heavy for me to just say, forget you guys. I'm going to go back there myself. But I needed the cart. We had so much stuff in the cart that was, I didn't want to take it through the store and back. So I had, I had said, like, if someone would have brought me a car, I would have run it back there, but it was too heavy to go all the way down the length of the store out to the outdoor garden and figure out where this crop went without having to set it. Like, two bags of it is too much for me, and they were soaking wet, too. Um, I think, um, well, maybe they weren't. That was a different store. We had <clears throat> the late, I go, okay, we rang up everything already. Like, we had, like, 50 items or, or 30 items. Everything was already ring up in bag except for that. I go, I'm going to go back and get the big containers. Can I leave this here? And she goes, no. And I was like, oh, heck no. I'm not going to. Like, in, in Kroger's, um, which is our, I eat all these. I don't have any more left. Kroger, which is our um, <clears throat> Fred Meyer, it's packed. There's lines. They will let you go back and get what you want or switch out. If you see something with expired date, they let you go back and get it switch out while you leave your groceries there like people stand in line the cashiers you go out to like oh wait so much stuff is here so much car is here and they let you even when you're in line with the human they're like you got a free turkey like i don't need it you got a free turkey don't you like go get your free turkey like there's like 10 people behind you in line and you run back to the freezer and hope you grab the right one fast and try to run back because well, they don't have to stay there. There's two different checkout areas. There's self-check. But I, that's one thing I like. And I think that's a personal decision. They're not going to say, oh, no, I'm not going to, you know, go to that. I don't, I'm not even going to shop at Walmart anymore. These people are cocky. And if, if he would have gone back and got them because he's strong, or if I would have got a cart and went and got them, that I would have spent more money. And because I didn't want to buy something that was double the price that it was listed, um, because also in uh, Fred Meyer, they don't always take the sale signs down. And when you see something that's on sale, sometimes 
It's a really good sale. You take a picture of it. So when you go to the checkout or you buy it through customer service, you say, this was on aisle four. Here's a picture of it. And this is why I'm buying it. Like, I didn't know. If, like I said, a lot of times stuff says it's on sale. And it doesn't ring up right. And I was doing vending, trying to sell stuff to customers. And the same thing will happen to them. So I say something about it. I said, this is what the sale price says. And I'm trying to sell this. And people are going to say, it says two for five. And they charged me $8 a piece. And they might not notice till they go home. They might live three hours away, you know. It's it's a pain in the butt. I've been there, done that. And for our job, we had a vending card that was good, loaded every week, every day of your shift. So if you worked on Friday, the, stuff, the amount, like if you had $42 to spend on Friday, you had to stay in that budget. Once you went to 42 you couldn't spend anything else. Um, and if you need toilet paper or tissue, uh, paper towels or spray bottle or some bags they would you'd have to call with the price and in real time give them your card number they knew it because from your name but you have to verify it and then they would um put like if it cost twelve ninety seven, they usually would put like fourteen dollars on there but basically twelve ninety seven, because they'd put tax they'd estimate like a tax even though we didn't have it um because it was a nationwide company <coughs> I would just get what it is. Um, so again, if that if that overcharged you, you had to go back and tell the call the company and wait on hold again um, for real time, adding money to your card. But <clears throat> we, my boyfriend, promised to go to Lowe's to get the dirt because I'm like the, I didn't need to buy the plants or the flower pots if I'm not going to be able to replant them <laughs> like you know what I, I was like i might as well put everything back and we went to lowe's i was like i want to get one more flower pot because i had got some tomato seeds and i don't i got one like small to medium sized pot not even a medium or medium to large and that's not really going to work too well i need it's going to need to be replanted but these cheap black ones they were all busted like broken already brand new they're de definitely not cheap um who wants to buy that? If you buy a good one, you see what happened to the, all the ones next to it. And then there was a couple clay ones I wanted, or fake clay ones, and they were stuck together. I couldn't get them apart, so I was like, forget that. I'm not going to get that either. And then the rest were the decorative ones. And, of course, everyone has the decorative clay pots. They want to sell $20, $30, but they don't have holes in them. Even if you're desperate, you're like, and I did buy one. I know it was plastic for that plant. So what had happened was I had... Um, gone and drove in the front of Lowe's and we saw these people the parking lot's completely packed I was like I wonder if it's gonna be there's no one out front I was like I wonder if it's like gonna be like Walmart where they're counting people and they're making line up um behind this barrier like we try to get in the we try to get in the garden center I was like I don't I think it's I think stores are blocking off they're only letting you come in one door like, even though, like, you have more traffic in one door, it seems like more people will be susceptible if one of those people coughs than if you have two, three doors. But I, I don't know why they're doing that. There was a huge line in the garden center to go to the checkout. There's all these people. You cannot be, you're next to strangers this close through that whole store. You cannot be six feet away from everybody, right? And so we go and look at pots, look at this. Because the line was so long out there, I kept having to go around the whole thing and look for the dirt and look for the orchid mix and get the regular dirt. And I was like, wait, this is, there's the potting soil and there's the top soil. I was like, make sure we get the potting soil. And I don't know how much it costs. I think it was the same stuff as the other. I think it was two or three cents more than Walmart. Um, the big one it was the other one. I, I think it was nine ninety seven. I think theirs was like nine ninety nine or nine ninety eight, something like that. It was like three or four cents of war. And so we got two. I thought we need two and I didn't even, I filled all the pots. I don't even need one. You know what I'm gonna do? This is so cheesy. See all these bottle, water bottles? I'm gonna cut them with, I don't have a utility knife, shoot. I meant to ask him. I have I have uh I wanna cut these containers open and put duct tape around the top, punch holes in the bottom, fill up every single one with dirt, fill every single one with a tomato seed and some, there's tomato seeds on the floor, 
some marigold seeds. And I thought from, we must have left it there. I thought from Lowe's we got cucumber seeds and I cannot find them for the life of me. Maybe I didn't get it. Or no, I got sage. I haven't, I haven't seen it, dude. I swore I got sage from, um, from there. Four one gallon plastic bottles. He ordered four gallons of tobacco. <laughs> he wanted to order. He wanted this. He wanted to order this much tobacco. <laughs> it says four gallon plastic bottles. <laughs> I was like, okay, so it's a quarantine going on. The vape shops are closed. The place that I said, I looked online for you. I can't find the stuff. I think they're closed. I think that are not, wherever state they're in, they're not opening to at least May 15th. If even they're going to open on Friday. I said, oh my God. I said, you might as well quit. I said, you might have to go and jewel from a gas station. If they don't sell the unflavored, um, non-propylene glycol, glycerin and, uh, to, to, uh nicotine. But if he's going to buy, I don't think it's going to be four gallons. If he's going to buy that, I wouldn't have been able to lift four gallons. I would have been able to lift two. Um, I don't want him to smoke cigarettes. I, I start to like the smell of vape and smoke, and I, I already want to start. I'll watch someone smoke, and it looks so glamorous. But the smell, my throat closed up. So, to get to the point of this very long-winded story, nobody touched that boat. The first day, one of the residents there went over there and was going back and forth where my plants were on top of this boat. And I hadn't seen anyone. Maybe I saw the dog. I saw the dog over there. And I was like, she going to jump up and eat that tomato plant and die? I was like, oh, crap. I got to get the tomato plant out of dog's reach. I was like, the dog goes over there. One resident goes over there. Someone else goes over there. I'm like, what the heck? Then trees start falling right next to the boat. So I take a chainsaw and, like, my boyfriend's a tree expert. And you, you even watched um, Rusty Sunday at 609 had his trees cut down. He booted people so they didn't like it. And they had to put the wedges in to make sure the tree timbered, you know, timber in the right direction and not on someone's car or not on someone on the side of like, walking their dog. You have to be very careful on, on yourself. Those, let me tell you something. I had a training session with a tree, watching somebody climb a tree and cut something. <sighs> this big around, or this big around, you think, oh, that's light, you know. You see guys on the side of the road putting that stuff in a chipper. Those freaking things are heavy. It's like you try to lift it up, and not only is it, it's like so heavy, it sticks to everything like I don't like to use the word velcro but like all of the branches with leaves and buds on them it's like they grab on it's like they don't want to be away from their trunk they grab onto every other branch and you got stuff that sticks that has um, thorns that you they blend in with the regular branches yeah, yeah! I had holes in my jeans I was like dang I was like I need a pair of Doc Martin still toed boots a pair of men's thick jeans and a freaking, like, you know, nice thick work shirt with a work jacket, like a Carhartt or something, you know, like something's gonna hit me, like something that's not a whole tree. So I think how I was pulling this stuff and I liked it, it was getting exercise. And then I think about someone falling a tree that's this wide around, and it's like, God, if that fell on you, gonna die. Like, like if it fell on someone's dog, like, I, 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 I know that wood is heavy. I know, like, you lift, like, a log that's this big, and you're like, whoop, whoop, boom. But I never even thought that dragging a, a branch was going to be that involved. Like, picking up sticks is one thing. You know, let's get some ab, like, back. I, I don't have abs. All of my energy comes out of my back, and my back has got degenerative joint disease. So I, I'm a mess in my body. But um, I was talking about all that and to my counselor. 
on the video chat call and the phone. I had to do video and phone call at the same time at the end. And I said, I'll talk about next time. One of my coping mechanisms and my relaxation and my exercise is making myself go outside to water the plants. Making myself go out and check the plants and replant them and get the appropriate things. If it needs sticks, if it needs a garden um, tomato thing, vining thing, whatever it needs. If you need to wash bugs off of it. If you need to try to think about putting pantyhose on the kale so that the little worms don't eat it. You know, and it gives you a chance to play in the dirt and get grounded. If you're not able to walk in your yard barefoot, it gives you opportunity to also replant stuff in your house when you see flower pots on sale because you already have potting soil for the outdoors you can bring and nourish your plants and get new plants indoors, be very selective and not wanting to get bugs. So it's like a whole, I was watching the um, Luck, Leave Everything and Wander videos and they were talking about doing yard work in the garden and how their mind shuts off and they just work and physically work and they're outside fresh air getting physical activity and they're working with dirt getting grounded and they're nourishing their garden which is going to nourish them with nutrient nutritious food and unfortunately like same thing you had to get rid of trees that just plant themselves you know just because the trees sometimes will tear up your house foundation because the roots um or um grow up in your garden like my one of my mom's garden turned into a tree nursery my dad and then replant the trees so his her whole garden she had a vegetable garden i just remember she had a vegetable garden my dad planted in it and took it over and she never had a vegetable garden again and i'm not gonna let somebody else who lives or owns the property mess up my garden because i mean i have to go wouldn't it be cool if you could have a condo but it was like a cabin and everybody lived like far away with no hoa <laughs> it's like might as well have a cabin or a shack out in your own property with no HOA, <laughs> like unincorporated city, city limit. Like, like I don't know the thing about the condo in Portland is the cheapest price, but the HOA makes it more expensive than a house in many instances. Um, and those increase, you pay something off to retirement and then you're still gonna pay four, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars a month for HOA and fees. Someone I know lives in housing development they own the house but it's a townhouse and they did they did something wrong so they had to replace all the garage doors and uh, they did it by house they have to pay part of their fees as a charge whether they had a problem with the garage or not so the people with there's people that had three car garages and there's the guy I knew had a single car garage he had to pay the same price for remodel as the people with triple garage so it's not fair at all um, or even the people that didn't need the help had to get pay for it I don't like that. If you have enough money, then that's part of the perk of living in a place where only people that amount of money live. But I ended up talking about everyone's around my plants. I went out there today and there's literally limbs from fallen trees, two inches from my freaking flower pots. And I made, I, I was walking out there, the grass was tall. There's deer in the yard. I was scared of deer ticks. The guy that my boyfriend works with has had two or three or four deer stuck to our ticks stuck to him in the past week and a half i don't know what he's doing to get ticks all over his body but i'm just like i'm not from around here and there's a lot of lyme disease here and the the grass was tall i was trying to walk over the, there's like railroad ties and stuff i walked over the railroad tie but i didn't notice because the tall grass i twist my freaking left ankle on saturday and so i was like if if I can, if I could get reimbursed or get like even like $75 off my rent, I would cut the grass even if I only cut like the edge and the area that we park our car. So I'm not going to use someone else's riding more. If, if it's something I can't replace, I'm not going to borrow it. So I would use uh, more that we have or like I used to, scissors. So I, I want to go out there. So this, they put the plants this close to his boat right next to my thing is this freaking tree and you're like you it's like you're intimidating me and my plants when you have two acres where you have this whole acre width to put the freaking fallen trees and you this boat is a little fishing boat you choose to surround that boat with this crap and maybe like guys the spatial recognition like they don't notice that somebody's freaking using their last penny to buy freaking dirt and they're scared that this pandemic is going to cause the grocery stores to just not have any more food and no no produce, no meat. People are like, buy your own meat, you miss rabbits. And 
um, not chickens, the quails. People don't even talk about getting fish. You can get like a koi pond or something. Like, I don't know if you eat koi, but you could get you could get your own tilapia. Freaking stuff going on. And there's lots of things you could do. I mean, I'm not. I don't eat meat, but I don't eat the vegetables. If the store starts talking about just people coughing, sneezing all over your vegetables, just because you hired someone to mop the floor all day to make it look like, make it look like we're sanitizing it. That's mopping the floor with a dust mop is not sanitizing. It should be done anyway. And I know why it's not done because it costs more money to pay someone ten dollars an hour to do that eight hours a day, to to do that kind of washing bathrooms and door handles and making it look like you're you're just throwing dust around coronavirus sticks on the floor in the air pollution dogs cats tigers or lions or whatever big cats so i'm on the phone with my counselor and i'm talking about this garden it's after it's 1101 so i know he has to get off this this appointment and i say well, I just have to do what I always do. Just quit, don't quit gardening. Well, I have to get pots. So I have to try to grow some stuff in the house. And I didn't have time to go on what happened where we live now with the yard and the grass. It's just one. It's like you could leave empty flower pots growing up with weeds and nobody gives a crap. But as soon as you plant organic, this, that, and the other, people are spraying pesticides, herbicides. They're doing all these powders and all this construction where you're like they're moving your crop breaking up your flower pots and leaving them you you got like on sale 50 percent off a 50 dollar flower pot and somebody breaks it and just like tries to prop it up next to another one to make it look like nothing happened they can't even knock on your door and say i'm sorry bro they say it's sorry i'm not asking you to replace it you should replace it have your insurance replace it have the manager tell you not to move people's flower pots they broke my flower pot and hit it of course I report it, I don't care, but it's like, you know, and so what happens is I end up like, I heard the door open down here and I heard keys and I thought it was my boyfriend and I didn't hear anybody. I was talking loud because I had the speakerphone on my lap I was like and then and then this happened and people round up my plants and blah 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 and they don't even tell me they're gonna do it Does that to my daughter's rose bush blah 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 and I had didn't hear footsteps I thought I heard the door shut a little bit and I thought oh maybe it's my boyfriend he, I heard keys I thought maybe he opened the door I went back out to the car to get something I get off the video conference with the with the counselor and I hear a door shut like you know how you hear that like in my old house the wind makes the doors it, there's central air or central heat the wind of that and stuff will make the upstairs doors. If you have a prop, it'll shut all the way. But I heard the door shut like five minutes, three minutes after I got off the talk. And I was like, oh crap. I just threw my flip flops on, put my voice recorder on. I said, oh my God, I got to go over there. See if there's someone in the garage. I didn't see anybody in the garage right before that happened when I was, um, I, I I saw the landlord leave and when when I heard the noise I looked in the driveway and his car was back so it, here's the here's four scenarios and I was talking about coping skills dealing with PTSD from people who violated my space and hurt me sexually assaulted me beat me inside of my house most of the stuff happened inside my own house there's only a couple instances that happened outside my house um, with sexual assault, um, but inside of my house, um, growing up and as an adult. And so I had this, besides the physical body, my personal items, and my garden has been, what is the Spanish word? Oh, I can't remember it. It's not, it's not um, abduction. It's not. Molest, molesto, 
like molesting, touching, messing with my personal stuff. And I try to say, let it go. You're alive today. God will give you the finances to replace those plants. And maybe not. Maybe you'll be greater in debt until you die and say, I wish I hadn't charged $5,000 worth of gardening supplies on my student loan. And now now it's worth 500000 by the time I'm 69 years old. You know what I'm saying? That, that's the reality of what you do when you borrow money. Um, it's like this. It's like... I'm talking about skills to help me maintain some peace. And I say it's hard to go out in the yard because I don't own the yard. And if people, you go outside, they come outside and yell at you and your boyfriend and talk about this and talk about that. And it's like you want to go outside and talk to God. And you go outside and it's like there's someone else in your face watching you, everything you do. And you're like, no one can like be like minding their business, brushing their dog. And then look up and say, hello, neighbor, and go back. You know, it's like they got to be like, and these white people, they might say hi to me or wave. My boyfriend's with me. They say, these white women, they say hi to him. And I look over, and they're just nose up in the air. So you're like, I don't have any friends. I don't have a personal space of my own. Every space I had, even my land, they cut down my plants and my trees. In my own house, people spray your own front of your land by a highway with pesticides or herbicides they don't even tell you when they're doing it you could be out there with your kid and hear a bunch of trucks and realize they're spraying or they just sprayed it and your kids eating the you know grass and the, you know rolling around in their clothes and you're trying to get some sunlight and you're like, oh crap now i gotta bathe my kid didn't have a bathtub you know how to wash it on the front porch with a freaking plastic tub um talking about feeling violated and having my garden not only, I heard the door open and then I heard it shut and I heard keys. And I'm going to ask my boyfriend, did you try to come in here and then leave? Because you heard me on the video chat. I don't want him to call the landlord and be like, was there someone in the house? Our car is gone. So they could, they could be coming. They could be seeing us leave together and come take the key and come rummage to our stuff. You don't know. We had stuff missing from the garage. The N95 mask are missing. missing. And there's N95 mask in their vehicles. Both of them. I'm not saying that they're ours because I didn't see the original ones. But my boyfriend, my boyfriend does uh, carpentry work and remodel and yard work and tree work and blasting and dust and dirt and asbestos or molds. He he's been ha he has them because he needs them for work. And when he went to get them, they were gone. So we could be wrong. Maybe it's in another crate. I didn't see the original ones. He put it there before I moved in. But he's been rummaging through this crate, looking like, what? Am I going crazy? Because I saw him there a couple months ago, you know. During the fall, he saw them before the coronavirus. So we were wondering if someone's going through our crap. But they didn't know the difference between their crap and our crap is on a shelf over here by the door. But I feel very violated to feel like I have um, someone potentially coming in the house, opening up the door. And not only eavesdropping on my therapy appointment, but violating my personal space. It's bad enough that the ants and the mice have gotten in. I don't know what to do, guys. I want to put a, a chain on it or something, but bye. Here's, here's my boyfriend. Great beard. I was like, great beard.